fables and sounds of the Nigerian story. Once upon a time, in a small village in the Hausa Kingdom, there lived a married couple, Danjuma and Halima. Danjuma was a hunter, while Halima was a trader. She sold jewelries and clothes in the market. They were successful in their businesses, for they were well known in the entire village. Everyone in that village was of the opinion that Danjuma and Halima had been blessed by Allah with everything anyone could ever wish for because they had great possessions and children, even though they were only boys. At least it shows that Halima is fruitful, her mother-in-law once said. But Halima was not satisfied. She wished she had a daughter because she felt that a girl will be more helpful than the boys in doing house chores. Moreover, she will be adorned with beautiful clothes and jewelries. Oh, how I wish I had a beautiful Nyarinya. If I had a daughter, at least she'll keep my company while I cook. She'll wear beautiful zanies and jewelries. Oh, how I wish, she thought to herself. Halima got pregnant again. But she gave birth to another bouncing baby boy. Everyone around was happy and they all rejoiced except Halima. Yaro again? She thought, irritated with herself. Her husband, Danjuma, as though reading her thoughts, said to her, Halima, Allah has blessed us again with another wonderful child. You should accept your fate as the mother of boys. Perhaps... Allah has destined for you to have only boys. Let's leave it at that. Accept our faith and be thankful to Allah. Her husband admonished her. Not minding her husband's words, this matter still disturbed Halima's mind greatly. She took care of her newborn son for some months and once he became stable on his little feet, the thought to have a baby girl came to her mind again. And so, out of desperation to have a daughter, she consulted a native priest who gave her some herbs and charms. But then, the priest gave a stern warning. Woman, nine months from now, you shall give birth to the daughter you seek. But you must remember this. You must not choose for her who to marry. For when the time is right, she shall choose for herself. And when that one comes, you must not hesitate to allow her to marry that one. Do you agree with this condition or not? I agree. I agree. Just let me have a baby girl as promised. I promise to keep to the agreement, Fa. She replied. In her desperation to have a daughter, she couldn't understand that the covenant she was entering into at the time was a very dangerous one. Or at least... She wasn't bothered about the consequences, for nothing else mattered. And so it was that, nine months later, true to the priest's words, 
Halima gave birth to a beautiful Aww. baby girl. Halima was overwhelmed with happiness, for she thought to herself, <sighs> At last, now I have a nyarnya. Finally, my dream has come true. Oh, how fortunate I am to have this child. So she named her daughter Maimona. Oh, how beautiful Maimona was as a baby. <sighs> she was so adorable, even as a toddler. Everyone around her truly loved her for she was special. She wasn't like every other girl her age because she was very beautiful. Soon, Maimona grew into an extremely beautiful lady. She was a signature of all eyes. Everyone in that village admired her beauty. All the men in that village wished they could marry her now that she is ripe for marriage. Suitors began to come to her parents to ask for her hand in marriage. The first person to come to her parents with a marriage proposal was her father's friend. His son, Danladi, had informed him of his interest in Maimona. But when Danjuma informed Halima about this, she humbly explained to her husband the reason they won't be able to choose a man for her. Hey, what have you done? He explained. It was then it dawned on her that what she had agreed to some years back might not be a fair deal after all. Unknown to her, this was just the beginning. More suitors came after that day. The handsome, the rich and wealthy, the common and simple, the influential, but Maimona rejected them all. Her parents were distraught because they couldn't do anything about it. One day, on Maimona's way to the market, someone caught her attention. It was a man, a very, 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 very handsome man. This was a first for her because no man in that village had ever gotten Maimona's attention in the way this stranger did. He looked quite different from every other man she had been seeing in that village. It was love at first sight, for she thought to herself, Why do I feel this way? No man has ever affected me in this manner. Why do I feel a strong pull towards this man? How I wish he could but speak to me. And as though reading her thoughts, this young, handsome-looking man approached Maimona. Son Dezua, beautiful Nyarinya. He said in salutations to Maimona. One could see a beautiful, bright smile appear on Maimona's face in response to the man's greetings. My name is Hassan. He continued. And I have come from far away to do business in this village. May I know your name? Maimona, she blotted. My name is Maimona. She felt so shy before this man. So, he is not from this village. No wonder he looks very different. Maimona thought to herself again. How can I get to see you again? She asked him. Let this be our meeting spot. Under that tree. Hassan replied, pointing to a tree around them. When Maimona got home, she excitedly narrated her experience earlier that day. She told her mother that she thinks she has finally met the one that is going to be her husband. The instant she mentioned the one, Halima's mind flashed back to the priest's exact words some years ago. And she knew that the time she had dreaded for a while had finally come. The next day, Maimona went to the meeting spot she and Hassan had agreed on the previous day. And when she didn't see him on time, 
she started singing. Malio, da malio, 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 da malio, da wa, malio, kaje inane, malio, kaje ilori, malio, yoshizaka dao, malio, sewa tangobe, malio, gobe da la bari, malio, jibi da la bari, malio, da malio, 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 da malio, na wa, malio. Before she was done singing, she saw Hassan walking towards her. They were both delighted to see each other again. So Hassan told Maimuna that he'd like to meet her parents because he wants to marry her. How elated Maimuna was when she heard these words come out of Hassan's mouth. And so she took him to her parents as a matter of urgency, then introduced him as the man she had chosen to marry. Her father tried to advise her against marrying him, explaining that he was too perfect to be real. Moreover, they barely know him or any member of his family. But she didn't care for she had made up her mind already. Her mother Halima didn't see anything because she understood what was going on. Sooner than expected, the marriage rites were conducted between Hassan and Maimona, to the amazement of the entire village. Immediately after the marriage ceremony, the couple were set to embark on their journey to Hassan's hometown. With lots of gifts and many sad goodbyes, especially from Halima, Maimona's mother, their journey began. After they had journeyed for a while, Maimuna asked Hassan if they were getting closer to their destination. Not yet. You know I told you I come from far away. He replied. At that point, Hassan told his new wife that they wouldn't be needing the camel and the donkey for they will have to walk on foot their own. They walked on for a while when Hassan suddenly stopped. Minini, what's the matter? Why have you suddenly stopped? Asked Maimona. <laughs> Hassan burst into laughter and replied, This is our destination. This took Maimona by surprise. She looked around, observing that there was no hut and no human in sight. All she could see were grasses and few trees and suddenly she became afraid. But before she could turn around to ask what they were doing in the middle of nowhere, Hassan had turned into a very big snake. Terrified, Maimona screamed on top of her lungs, but there was no one to come to her rescue. What a tragedy. Maimuna continued to stare at the giant snake, shocked, confused, and petrified. Not knowing what to do, she just looked on as she was thinking in her mind. How fast can I run? How far will I go before the snake catch up with me? Ya Allah, save me! This snake can strike at me any moment from now and kill me. I'm lost. How do I even find my way back home? Just then, she felt a pang of regret. She recalled how her father had warned her about marrying Hassan, a stranger she barely knew. Oh, if only she had listened to her father. This is our destination. The snake hissed. Listen to me and listen carefully. You are now mine to keep till I get tired of your beauty. Then I'll eat you. But for now, you'll live by my rules. And as it continued to talk, the snake transformed into a human again. Only this time, 
is changed into a much older looking man. This man happened to be the same priest Maimona's mother, Halima, had gone to in her search for a baby girl 19 years ago. But Maimona never knew all this. Ya Allah! How could Hassan have turned into a snake and from a snake into this old man, she wondered. Indeed, he was a total stranger to Maimona. Yet, Maimona was no stranger to this man. In fact, he had monitored her since she was a baby. Hence, his premeditated move to attract her to himself years later. Several years ago, there was another family who had a similar situation but a different family structure from Danjumas. Once upon a time, Aldu was married to only one wife. Zainab was a humble and good-looking woman and her husband loved her. However, he had made it clear from the onset that he was a polygamist, therefore, he was going to marry as many wives as was necessary. Zainab got pregnant almost immediately after they got married and nine months later she gave birth to a baby girl. Aldu was delighted at the arrival of his first child. He wasn't so particular about the gender for he was certain he was going to have many other children after all. The excitement of becoming a father was overwhelming enough. So why should he bother? As the years rolled by, they had their second, third, and fourth child, who were all girls. Initially, Aldo didn't give it much thought, at least not until one of his friends jokingly brought his attention to it one day. Okay, we like it. If we were told in future to present our sons for an important mission, you'll disguise one of your daughters as a son, Kobakaba. What do you mean exactly? I'll do it, Torted. What I mean is that, so far, you have only daughters. His friend replied. But girls are also intelligent. Besides, I'm going to have more children, so you can't conclude like that. Notwithstanding, after his friend left, I'll do considered his words and gave it a serious thought. After some minutes of thinking about the matter, he decided he would marry his second wife. And that was how he got married to Habiba. When his second wife started giving birth, she also gave birth to girls. So by the time she had her third daughter, Aldu became worried. My first wife couldn't bear me a son. My second wife is yet to bear me a son too. What is happening? He thought to himself. One day, he called out to his wife. Zomana! I have had enough of daughters. I want a son now. He shouted at them. But it's not our doing. After all, Allah is the giver of children. Zainab responded in a bid to calm him down. See, I don't care for your opinion on this right now. All I know is that I want a son that will be my heir. Kunajiko. As for Zainab, she was contented with the children God had given her. However, Habiba took her husband's words to heart and decided that she will try all she can to bear him a son. And so it was that, in her desperation to have a male child, she went to a native priest, the same one Halima visited. Only that, Habiba visited earlier than Halima. Therefore, at the time Habiba went to the native priest for a solution to her dilemma, he told her that she'll have to come back in three days. By then, the herbs will be ready for you, he said. So Habiba returned to her home, hopeful as she looked forward to collecting the herbs in three days' time. Meanwhile, after she left, the native priest kept thinking of how he would make her have a baby boy. Although I have magical powers, I am not God who has the power to give children. These fools who come to us do not know that there is a limit to what we can do. If only I can find a baby boy from another womb to swap with her. Some hours later, Halima was seated in front of the priest as she explained to him how desperately she wants a baby girl at all costs. Of course, 
This was what he needed after all. Now I have got two babies to swap. He thought as he smiled mischievously. He concocted some herbs and potions, then gave it to her with a stern warning. Woman, nine months from now, you shall give birth to the daughter you seek. But you must remember this. You must not choose for her who to marry. For when the time is right, she shall choose for herself. And when that one comes, you must not hesitate to allow her to marry that one. Do you agree with this condition or not? I agree. I agree. Just let me have a baby girl as promised. I promise to keep to the agreement first. She replied. After she had left, the priest laughed <laughs> wickedly and said, Ignorant woman! <laughs> when the time is right, I shall enchant her daughter and she shall fall in love with me. I shall be that one to be chosen. <laughs> no wonder he transformed into Hassan 19 years later and bewitched Maimona so that she was attracted to him like moth to flame. As for beautiful Habiba, she returned as expected to collect her portion from the priest. She also had to agree to a condition attached to the promise given to her. Unknown to her, the native priest had inflicted a baby boy in her womb with a rare form of affliction. This was an inevitable occurrence considering that the magical process he engaged in swapping the baby boy was weightier. Therefore, Habiba's only son grew up having some defects in him even as a man. Back in the forest, after the snake had transformed into an older looking man, the native priest, Maimona began to wonder who exactly she was married to. So she pleaded with him saying, Please tell me, who exactly are you? What is my offense that you have decided to punish me in this manner? Just then, he burst out in evil laughter and replied, I am Messiri. The great sorcerer. And you are now mine, for your mother had betrothed you to me from her womb by virtue of the covenant she made with me 19 years ago. In tears, Maimuna blotted out her disbelief. My mother betrothed me to you? How so? Why? Why would she do this to me? Why? <laughs> Her cries fell on deaf ears as he called his slave a monkey to attend to his new bride. This monkey was no ordinary monkey for it could communicate eloquently in human language. It became Maimona's only companion as she lived in the forest, especially on days the Meisihiri wasn't around. One day, Maimuna asked the monkey how it was possible for it to communicate in human language and how it came to serve the Mesihiri as master. It sighed deeply mm. and said, I am simply paying for my sins. I was once a human being myself before I was turned into a monkey. And over the years, I have had to repent time and again, regretting my past evil deeds. If only I hadn't been wicked to my twin brother. If only I hadn't allowed greed, jealousy and hatred overwhelm my soul. Oh, how I wish I could turn back the hands of time, but it's impossible. I only pray for forgiveness now. Even as he reflected on the past events in his life, he said, My name is Bala. My name is Maimona. Bala completed her sentence for her to her surprise. Yes, I know your name. Moreover, I know who you are. I have known you since you were a child. How's that even possible? She said almost as a whisper. Seeing her confused expression, Bala felt the need to explain certain things to her. You see, 
I have worked with Macy Hiri for a very long time now, even before you were born. He began to tell her. Your mother and so he me. went on to tell her how her mother had come to the Macy Hiri, desperately seeking a baby girl, and how he had used his knowledge of magic in achieving what she desired. He also told her how the magician, who came to be known as a native priest, had a special means of monitoring her since she was born to the point she was old enough to be married. And finally, how he had changed into a young, handsome man, casting a spell on Maimona so she could fall helplessly in love with him, then choose to marry him. Ya yeah, Allah! So I was enchanted! Maimona exclaimed. As she considered Bala's words. And now I'm done for. She concluded as tears streamed down her cheeks. It was then she understood what the Maysihiri meant when he declared that her own mother had devoted her to him. No, you're not, Bala declared. There is a way out. Bala had proposed in his heart to help Maimona from the first day she arrived at the forest, for he felt that she shouldn't have to suffer for her mother's mistakes. He had been with the Maysihiri long enough to know his secrets and tricks. So he told Maimona how she could escape. There is a pot containing some magical potions the Maysihiri drinks from every three days. I have tried to break this pot on numerous occasions to no avail. The day he caught me trying to break this pot, he simply laughed and told me that the pot could only be broken by a female virgin. Therefore, there was no way I could ever succeed in breaking it. I have always suspected the contents of this pot to be the source of his magical powers. If you break it, then you shall be free to escape. But how will I find this pot? Maimuna asked. Just follow me and I will take you to where it's being kept. However, we must hurry so you can break it before he returns by evening. And so he took her to a tree very close to the river bank. In a flash, he climbed up into the tree and appeared some minutes later bearing the pot in his hands. He handed it over to Maimona and instructed her to smash it immediately. She did as bidded and in that instant, Bala was transformed into a human being. Apparently, the spell of being in his monkey form could only be broken the day he will genuinely help a human being. Of course, this condition was known by Nisihiri, but he didn't tell Bala about it because he wanted Bala to be his slave forever. From where he was seated in his shrine, the Nisihiri was struck to death by thunder and lightning. Somehow, Maimuna found her way back to the village and so did Bala to his village. On getting home, Danjama broke the news of Halima's death to Maimuna. It's unfortunate that your mother passed on some days ago. She had mourned your departure for days from that day you got married to Hassan. She starved herself for days till she fell terribly ill. Her last words were that Allah should have mercy and make a way of escape for her daughter. She had confided in me after he left that day that, because of the covenant, she had no hope of seeing you again. If only she had listened to me. Maimona later narrated to her father all she had gone through in the forest and how she was able to escape. Even after knowing what her mother had done, she was sad about her mother's death regardless. She was later married off to one of the young men in the village and her father strongly advised the new couple to be contented with the children God will give to them. The end.